I served 10 years as an Army infantryman and grew up in a poor trailer trash, as a poor trailer trash kid from a small town in Wyoming. The recession of 2007 hit and there wasn't much opportunity. And since the military holds health care and education hostage, the military was the only option out of that life. I now know almost 20 years later that I was economically conscripted. My economic status made me perfect prey to feed their machine. When I joined, they said they needed bullet catchers, literally. Four months after I finished basic, I was deployed to Nijaf, Iraq. The things I did and saw during my 13 months there will haunt me forever. The images that we see today of Palestinians are the exact same things I saw in Iraq almost daily. It's something I still have to live with. But this is the nature of modern warfare. Again, because the military holds so many resources hostage, I stayed in. I had a new kid and I was broken mentally. They told me there was no one who would hire me. Killing isn't really a marketable skill other than here. I bought that line. It wasn't until my final deployment in 2015 that I couldn't take it anymore. I started to radicalize. I decided I was no longer going to play these games and no longer was I was no longer was I going to destroy my humanity or others for someone else's profit. I had learned about other war resistors at this time and the things they did. I started to refuse tasks, missions. The final straw was when I told my commander I was going to frag him or throw a grenade at him. And he didn't send a soldier home for his mom's brain surgery. I was segregated from my platoon called a shitbag, a coward, among other things, placed on extra duty, but I didn't care. I couldn't change the past, but I could commit to change the future. I was committed to never again compromise myself for this death machine. As a comrade recently said, I had sharpened my heart and my mind to fight the true enemy. Aaron said that this is what our ruling class has decided will be normal. He wasn't calling on them to have a change of heart. They have no heart. He was calling on us, he was telling us that these people, no matter if they are city council members or the president, they don't serve our interests. They serve the banks and Wall Street and real estate investors. They serve Raytheon and Lockheed and Boeing. They wring their hands and they say they wish they could do more or they just simply condemn them off and move on because that's the party line. Every crisis we hear, call your local politician, call your city politician. Vote, it's the most important election. For what? If any politician, local or federal, cared, they wouldn't send billions of dollars to Israel. They wouldn't send the pigs out to rip working class families from their homes. They wouldn't shut down migrant camps to save a few bucks. They wouldn't let the pigs that killed Paul Castaway stay on the forts. They said to call the politicians when they sent me to war, where over one million people died and more continue to suffer. Look what good that did. We can no longer not engage. We must disregard this call, and we must engage. We need to organize ourselves independent of the Democrats and so-called progressives, because they don't represent us. Nope. Palestinians are being slaughtered every day, and people are going to tell us not to engage with this bigoted supporters of the apartheid system. I say fuck that. To not engage, to not confront, to not be combative is to be complicit. This system and its lackeys only know confrontation. Palestinians do not get to live in peace. So why should these politicians? Why should these supporters of Zionism? Why do they get to lay their heads down at night while Palestinians live in fright? Aaron's actions were a call for us to commit ourselves to not just Palestinian liberation, but all human liberation. His actions were a call for us to be brave and courageous. Our siblings in Palestine are brave and courageous. Our siblings in Kashmir, the Congo, Rojava, and anywhere else in imperial oppression are brave and courageous. The need to kill George Floyd is the same need that has killed over 30,000 Palestinians. To quote the Irish rebel and socialist James Conley, our demand, most moderate are, we only want the earth. No justice, no peace. From the river to the sea, all cops are bastards. Globalize the Intifada, free Palestine. Woo!